one of the reasons Kiev's putting its faith in the loyalty of its new National Guard. It's arguably because morale within army units is wavering, with some soldiers already switching sides. Paul Aslia talks to some of those who just days ago didn't expect they would be ordered to use force against their own people. The battle is brutal. And as this former miner turned commander shows me, it's far from over. Alexander tells me the army is divided. 40% of soldiers say they will not fight. At least that's what his younger brother says. He is serving in the Ukrainian army. The army doesn't send him and others to Donetsk because they are from that city. They know that they will get rid of their commander and join us. You're supposed to protect us. We're not going to shoot. We weren't even planning on it. But that's not how everyone feels. If they try to storm the base, which is a guarded territory, I would use arms. That's what I should do according to the law. And this border guard we spoke to is also ready to open fire. We have the right to use arms without approval from higher ranks and we will act by law. But whose law? Confusion ensued earlier this week when the army entered Kramatorsk in eastern Ukraine. What order did you get? We didn't have any orders. We just came here and that's it. We didn't expect we would come here. Is General Krutov your chief command? We don't know who he is. How do your soldiers feel? We are all tired. We do not know what's going on. But we will not shoot. No way. In another incident, dozens of soldiers sent to Slavyansk, also eastern Ukraine, refused to follow orders. The situation is taxing on everyone. This barracks in the Ukrainian countryside seems almost like an oasis. It's so peaceful and quiet here that you can almost forget about the unrest gripping the rest of the country. But we're warned not to speak a word of Ukrainian. Doing so here could put our lives in danger. There is not one place in Ukraine today that is untouched by the fighting. Paulus Lea RT, Donetsk.